We are a small company, as already said, and uh, we are doing about 16 projects per year. They are most of the time on a lump sum fixed price. They can be internal or external projects, and the project size is between 0.5 and 50 million US dollars. All of our systems are tailor-made. So we don't have a catalog where you can select, I would like to have this and this and this. We, we go in and sell our ideas, our concept, or even dreams to our customers. Projects have several phases. Uh, there is a sales process, which is, according to me, the most important one. And then uh, you have the basic and detail engineering, which is done in-house. The manufacturing, this we subcontract. We have no uh, in-house fabrication, but we do the inspection uh, by internal specialists. The erection is largely subcontracted also. Supervision again by internal people. Commissioning, startup, and erection of these uh, turnkey projects are done by our own people again, by our own engineers. The engineering cycle time lasts between two months and a year. And it's always the customer who determines the delivery dates. Why, why did we venture into critical chain and, and concerto and all this jazz? We wanted, basically, we, we had a strategy and part of the strategy was to strengthen the position within the Rio Tinto group. And this you normally do by increasing your profitability. By having more resources available, by not, uh, by not firefighting, uh, we had also, uh, we could increase our R&D efforts and to keep our uh, competitive advantage. Targets was to increase our pro productivity by 20%. And we wanted to measure it by the number of projects completed and the throughput achieved. As we were doing, or as we are doing more projects, we also, with the same number of people, we also expected to increase our profit accordingly or better. When you look at the implementation elements, you see our flow through the company, workflow through the company, starting with the sales pro uh, process and ending with the startup of our systems. We decided to focus with Critical Chain and Concerto mainly on the engineering uh, phase of these projects, because this was our constraints. So we basically said in the beginning of the implementation, if we can squeeze 20% more projects through the engineering uh, with the same number of resources, we, the, other, the other departments can cope with that. Uh, of course, sales um, was able to do that. You see later on, uh, sales actually outperformed critical chain and we were uh, in trouble in the beginning. Uh, procurement is no problem. Manufacturing is external, so it's also not a problem to, to cope with the 20% additional uh, requirements. Erection and startup, we can hire freelance people to help us with this work. So that was the plan. Then we started uh, in April 2009 with the imp implementation. After the first month, we, we had already the VIP reduction completed and we were driving for quick results. After the second month, we went for the buffered plans and in the third month, we already had our bi-weekly operation review meetings. After three months, task management was working and project control as well. The first uh, issue we had to tackle was the VIP reduction. We had to freeze the project. Uh, we actually had 12 projects in our pipeline at the same time. We, we noticed that as, as our resources were very thin, thinly spread through these projects, 
we, we decided to reduce this project from 12 to 7 active projects. And later on, we decided to remove them or to remove one further and go to six active projects. We de decided then further on to implement two uh, full kit points. Uh, one after basic engineering and another one after detail engineering. After basic engineering, basically what would we expect to see in such a full kit mode or in such a full kit uh, list? Uh, these would be uh, general arrangements, P and IDs, um, first uh, preliminary uh, functional descriptions for, for the process engineers and uh, an equipment list. And there are a few other documents which are uh, required, obviously. Only once these documents are ready, we have a, a full kit meeting with a full kit manager, and then we go into or we venture into detailed engineering. After detailed engineering, after all the drawings are complete, after all documentation is ready, then we have a, a second full kit meeting and we go into purchasing. Afterwards, we went into task management. We had our daily task management meetings, uh, which took place with our engineering and designers. Uh, the, our task managers obviously asked always the same questions. How many days left? And uh, do you have a blocking issue? Then a task manager updates the system around 10 o'clock at 10.15 every day. We run automatically the buffer management. And at 11, 11 o'clock, we have our fast track resolution meeting. For that, uh, we, we had a senior manager appointed as a fast track uh, resolution manager. And at the same meeting, we have all task managers and project managers taking part. We, during the implementation, we noticed that we needed additional firepower uh, in these meetings and we actually decided that both Rudy and myself uh, in the two locations had to um, participate during these meetings in order to get the stuff going. Uh, because there are too many uh, departments involved, everybody at the same level, and sometimes things simply didn't happen. Now, since we had done that, that was the most important uh, uh, issue uh, resolved, I think, it goes well, it goes very well. In the last uh, one month, we made tremendous progress. All of our uh, projects are in the green right now. Then we went into our bi-weekly, and this is for both locations, um, ops reviews. We do these uh, ops reviews on a video conferencing system between the two offices. And uh, we basically talk about the pro project portfolio uh, the, the pipeline, we, 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 we talk about uh, projects coming in through sales. Uh, we inform our sales team when there is a, an open spot. Obviously, you cannot always drive it. Uh, sometimes a, a customer wants to order and he has uh, some ideas about his uh, schedule. Uh, but we try to influence the customer in a positive way. And uh, most of the time, we are successful. Then we go also in these uh, meetings through the execution management. And uh, of course, as already said this morning, the most important is the improvement uh, initiatives and the sustaining, uh, sustainment of the system. Okay, at this time, I would like to hand over to my colleague, Rudy Keller. Thank you, Patrick. <clears throat> I'm coming now to the funny part where I can show what we achieved with what we have implemented. We show here on this uh, graph with the three colors. We show what we had over the, see whether this works. It doesn't. We show the average over the last three years. It's anyway, it's the red curve or the red line where we show within the same time period from beginning, end of March or beginning of April to uh, what we are now or what we project, then we have a target of completion, the number of projects, it's the blue line, 
and the actual accumulated number of projects is the green line. So we see we do better in target. We were ha very happy about that. We did the same curve with respect to throughput. And in the throughput, the curves look very similar. OK, here, sorry, here is the throughput. Again, the red line is what we had as an average. The blue line is our target. And uh, the green line is what we actually uh, were able to achieve. Obviously, in doing more projects, we also improved our earning capability. We're stating we sharply increased. Again, over uh, an average over the last three years, number of projects, 6.9. Target was 20% increase, re, uh, resulting in 8.3. And actual, what we achieved was 10. In terms of throughput, we see the same trend. We went from 9.4 million Swiss francs, target 11.3, and as achievement, we reached 12.3. Here in this table, we present the before and after, what was the way we were working before, and what is the way we're working today. In terms of resources, you can see we had not real clear priorities. People were, uh, were working more on a gut feeling of approach. Employees feel that they, whatever they are doing is wrong. What do we mean with that? We mean that inherently people want to do a good job. But since the priorities were not there, and we were all working all over the places, we had a lot of mistakes or quite a number of mistakes, resulting in rework, and people felt they didn't do a good job. Now today, we have all the priorities clearly prioritized, and what is very important, the employees see the larger picture, they have an improved accountability. Why is that? Because the people are embedded in a whole, in a, something that is like a chain, and they know if they're not doing their job, they have an impact on the chain upwards and downwards. We are also stating here that every person working on what they feel might be right, it goes again with what I said in the first line, with the gut feeling approach. And today, we have a complete organization focused on critical activities. And how do we achieve it? How do we do that? This is by the, the uh, fast track resolution issue meetings that we conduct every day. In terms of project management, project start immediate. Of course, the philosophy was the faster you start, the faster you finish. Today, we start project as per available capacity with the pipeline approach that we have in place. A detailed design in parallel to requirement definition. What that meant was we did already start to work on detail engineering, but the definition of the scope of the engineering part was not even complete. Today, we have stable requirements, and that before we start detail engineering. And that we have in place, or we ensure by having this full kit approach. When we are reaching full kit one, we have all the basic engineering complete to the point that we can really start and we have no, no uh, lack of information for the detailed engineering. In terms of uh, purchasing orders, sent with preliminary or incomplete drawings. What that means, we used to send drawings with the purchase order to our manufacturers, and they were not the latest revision. And of course, that triggered afterwards when we had to do some modification on the drawings, that triggered a lot of extra work. And you can be sure that the manufacturers took uh, advantage of that 
and charged us accordingly for all the extra work. Today, we only place orders with drawings that are final revision, last issue of drawing. It also had an impact on sales. Obviously, the guys on the road or the, the salespeople, they want to sell. So they pushed in the project whenever they were able to sell something. They tried everything and pushed it into the, into the queue, so to speak. Today, because of the vis visibility we have in, through our system, even the guys in the sales department, although we don't have the concerto approach in the sales, they have access to all the information and see what's cooking. And as a result, when they negotiate, they already know how they could comply with customers' demand in terms of milestones or in terms of project delivery. With respect to management, obviously, since we were all over the places, and we had no clear priorities, our job was mainly firefighting, and we were good at that, for sure. But today, we have, with the daily management attention <clears throat> on the critical task, our firefighting is reduced to the activities maybe on job sites or startups, start but uh, not to the same extent anymore as before. Implementation challenges. We implemented, as Patrick stated, the, impl uh, the, the, uh, the, the critical chain on the both locations, in Montreal, in Zurich, and in Montreal. Um, and in order to minimize the hiccups, what we did, we formed the core team. And within that core team, we had also two members from the Montreal office, and they went to Zurich for six weeks when we started with this exercise. Customer expectation management. Customers expecting to see progress on start immediately scheduled. This is more so true because, as Patrick uh, alluded earlier, we have typically, most, uh, not, not most, but a, a large number of our projects are turnkey, but we also have supply contracts only. And when we have supply contracts only, what the customer expects, as soon as he senses a purchase order, they want low data information of engineering so that they can take this data and give it to the other contractors they're employing on the job to get the civil work or whatever other structural work uh, going. So when we have a turnkey project, obviously we have that's more internal, all these issues, so we have a better control. But there is, because a customer expect information ASAP, there is a tremendous challenge from that end. Overloaded pipeline. Business needs bigger than critical chain improvement capability. What that means that in a lot of our projects, we get, once the project started, we get change orders. Customers realize they have not covered the whole scope and they would like to have some additional work from us included in our deliverables. But not only do they want more, but they want that also at the same time or earlier. So that, obviously, we then need to try to squeeze into the work already in existence, which, if the pipeline gets overloaded, we have to look at the whole picture, and then we take projects with a lesser priority and put them maybe temporarily on freeze. We have done that, and we continue to do that. We also have issues with resources when we get overloaded, and more so, obviously, at the beginning, when we implemented a critical chain, and we had a lot of resources tied into this implementation, the training, the getting used to the task management, and the new way of doing things, so we had to resort to overtime at the beginning, 
That even happens today. Or sometimes we have to resort to get freelance people or temporary employees. This is not our preferred route, because as we know, since we are in a specialized field of technology, we don't find people just out there. And typically, when we hire temps, they typically are on a drawing board and designers that take up to two times longer than our regular employees. Alignment between mechanical engineering and automation. Um, here, the issue was, or still is at times, is the student syndrome, as we call it, that the guys in automation, especially those who write the software, they feel they can write the software later on when the equipment is already being shipped. They feel we need that only once we start it up. And when the moment comes that we need the software, they are tied up in other projects. So there is still an issue sometimes with the guys of the automation that they follow the mechanical activities. Senior management active involvement required to get things going. Uh, Patrick alluded to that before. And uh, what I can s say to that is that contrary to maybe some of the larger organizations that we heard uh, this morning, the, where they stated that the core business was a one team and the management is another team. In our case, because we are a very small outfit, the core business is the management team. So the top talks are in the core uh, team. So what that means that we are daily involved in the fast track resolution meetings. And from my perspective, that has probably brought the biggest uh, uh, push to the success or to, 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 of the implementation because if we are able to solve blocking issues within 24 hours, which is our goal, that's really the driver to get the tasks finished. Cycle time target setting and project planning, again here, we are involved when we do the the network, the planning for the whole project, we also are part and go into these meetings. Driving task to completion is a very important issue. We have to make sure that we finish tasks, not that we jump again or before we even come to an end, we jump already to, a, a follow, uh, to the next task. We have to make sure that tasks are finished. Ops review decisions, sorry. Ops review decisions and lessons learned. Establish resource pool for buffer recovery and interrupt handling. What that means, we had at the beginning, we felt that other than the people that are in the, in the uh, uh, involved or included in the concert, in the planning, we felt that we needed some pool resources because uh, other than just the actual project, we sometimes get requests from customers or from our uh, subcontractors that come back and have find something on a drawing that needs to be reworked or we also use our designers to help the sales department to prepare proposals. So we felt we, we, or we, need, we, we saw the need of creating a pool. We started out with one to two guys in the design room and we learned very quickly that was wrong. And today in our pool resource, we have about four guys. Reduce VIP for task managers. Here again, uh, we probably at the beginning underestimated the work of the task managers. Not so much the follow-up work or the work to, to keep the concert updated daily, but the big work here is the task preparation. And so in the case of our Zurich office, where we have many more designers than in Montreal, we started out as sa the same as in Montreal. In Zurich, we started out with one task manager for the design room, but we quickly had to learn we needed a second. And 
It was even at the beginning to the point that the task manager himself, he was doing design work. Today, that's not anymore the case. It fully dedicated to preparation and control of the tasks. Too many open tasks focus on task completion. Do not start new tasks unless previous task is finished completely. I can't, more, uh, I can't add much more to that. It is, it is, as I mentioned before, for us one of the most important issues that we do not allow to jump from, to task unless they are complete. Setting time cycle targets. Initial estimation or estimate of often below required or below what is feasible. Not only top down, also bottom up. What, are, what does that all mean? When we do our planning and, and uh, cycle time target setting, we do this exercise with the whole team. All the stakeholders have to be involved from the top guys to the task manager, to the design, the lead designer, to the designer. And that's when we set the stage for a project. It's not that the task are in terms of, of, of what the task contain or in terms of how long the task is going to take are being determined by a planner. They are jointly being determined, defined and set by the whole team. And what also happens sometimes as the, we go along with the project, it sometimes happens that we have to go back on the planning and change some of the targets or shift them around because we don't have the priority side. That, can, that, that also happens. And in terms of estimates, we quite often underestimate that because we forget that a task is not finished unless the task, in our case, the task means, for instance, to elaborate the drawing. The drawing needs also to be checked, it needs to be reviewed and commented by the technology people. And if revisions are required, they need to be carried out. And we want the task to be complete before we move on. But this usually, that estimate is typically uh, not at the right level. We tend to not account for all these extra reviews and revisions. Do not compromise on leaving projects out. What we mean with that, we call those the ghost projects. Because when we started out, we had, uh, in this concrete case, we had two projects that were almost complete. We said, well, they're almost complete. It's not worth the effort even to go in there and put them into concerto. Anyway, what we thought would be finished in a week or so, at the end of the day, took six to eight weeks and took resources that we really needed elsewhere.